Kizuga has started a campaign is called Stop, Stop Abuse. I'm sure you follow the story through. We'll get to speak about this campaign, what she seeks to achieve with it, and uh, where the launch is going to take place and what we need to do. So, the Kizuga is here. I know she's not too happy with me, so I'm trying to be very, very diplomatic with my intro. Shale, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Very well, thank you. You're looking great. Thank you. You too. Okay, so this is the uh, tar for the yes. uh, stop. So, yes. stop violence. So. Yes. That's uh, Vicky Zuga. So it's an initiative by you. And um, tell us more about it. It's um, motivation came from personal experiences. And then, uh, stab, apart from stab being STAB from Stop Abuse, I lost a friend to uh, domestic violence because she was stabbed to death by her boyfriend. That was when. Here in Ghana? Yes, here in Ghana. How, how long ago? Um, about four years ago, okay. that was when I started putting things, to, that was when I had the idea to start a campaign. But it didn't really go well, and then I just revived it again. So the stab came from my friend that I lost, and then, yes, what did you even ask? <laughs> I'm, I'm talking plain. No, no, no I'm, I'm mm. saying that, okay, so what's the niche is about? That's what you're telling me. Yes, mm. so that's how I got the uh, motivation. And then, yes, from personal experiences, more. And uh, I think that it's on, um, it's on the increase. The rates at which people are being abused is, is crazy. You'll be surprised. So uh, the time to talk about it and do something about it is now because some people actually think that it's okay to abuse people. I think uh, they think that that's the only way to correct people and everything. We need to let them know that it's not okay to abuse anybody, be it your child, your spouse, your partner, is not okay to abuse anybody. Okay, so you're not limiting it to women. You're no. opening the scope. Yes. Okay. Okay, so do you think also that men get abused? Sometimes you get to hear stories like that because every time it's about women. Uh, so I'm wondering if men also get abused. Every time it's about women because uh, with physical abuse, you get to see it. If someone abuses you physically, you have bruises and wounds on you, and it's obvious I can easily identify. But... If you are abused emotionally, it will be difficult. Some people can pretend very well. The, the women mostly abuse the men emotionally with their words. So verbal abuse is, is, is a killer. It kills more than physical abuse. You know, a woman can actually tell the husband, You're, I regret getting married to you. Go out there and look at what your other men are doing. You're useless, you're nothing, you're worthless, you're what, what, what. And all these things, as time goes on, it registers in the guy's mind and eventually he becomes useless. So you kill people by abusing them verbally. So it's not, it's not just about physical abuse. So yes, that's why we are talking for the men and the kids as well. Because mm -hmm. some kids are actually the breadwinners for the family. Grown-ups will sleep and then ask the child to go sell water or uh, granite or stuff on the streets, busy streets, and then feed the family with uh, uh, the income. That is child abuse, and it has to be looked at. Yes. Now, with the fact that you're talking about it's from personal experience, we all know the story, so there's no need to visit that story. But how did you find strength, or how have you found strength? Because a lot of people have tried to, you know, talk you down, don't do the zonjas. How have you found strength, you know, to go on with this campaign? Strength came from above. Strength came from above because the, the insults, the sabotages, everything was just happening at the same time. And then I prayed to God. I, I, I told God that I wanted something to something positive out of this whole chaos around me. So when I, I started to embark on the campaign, I prayed for strength from God. And I think all these is, is by His grace, because I asked for that strength and He's given it to me. Do you think that God made you go through all these so that this campaign can come to light? Well, to an extent, I think so, because when I lost my friend to abuse, then I hadn't been really abused, so I didn't really, I wasn't serious with the campaign. I just created a, a, a page on Facebook and then asked people to send in their stories, their experiences and stuff. And then I left it there because it wasn't, the response wasn't very encouraging, so I didn't push it. You know, but after I went through it back to back, I'm now <laughs> serious and then more motivated to do it. So yeah, I think to an extent, God made me go through it to save someone's life and he kept me alive through it all so i can be 
what I am today. <laughs> now, there are people also who might, for some reason, not believe. You're saying that, okay, maybe Vicky just wants to, you know, get some attention, win some sympathy and all that. What do you say to things like that? Because I, I monitor blogs as well when people post about this, uh, the reactions that people begin to post beneath it. And I'm wondering, how do you pick yourself together? How do you, you know, react to things like that? Who they think that maybe you're seeking attention and, you know, all that. How do you, you know, gather yourself together so that you're not distracted? I just ignore most of the comments. That's all I do. I just ignore them because what's the point in coming out to say I've been abused if I haven't? There are other ways I could get fame. You know, I'm, I've been in this industry for years. I know almost all the bloggers in Accra. So if I wanted just fame, I could go about it some other way and know this. I wouldn't use people's names and then accuse them of something they haven't done. My conscience wouldn't let me do it. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. So yes, I've been abused and yes, I'm talking about it. I'm not ashamed anymore. I used to be ashamed of talking about it because of the stigma, because of what I'm going through now. But now I've grown out of all of that. So I just ignore those comments and I move on. I know what I'm doing is positive. I know I'm truthful. I know they did abuse me. And uh, uh, in their heart of heart, in their heart of heart, they know the guys, the guys who abused me know in their heart of heart that they abused me not once, not twice. So they might come out and uh, deny it, but if they sleep at night, they'll think about it and their conscience will judge them forever. Mm -hmm. If I'm lying, my conscience will judge me. What, what, what do you, how do you see this going? You know, now you're starting an initiative. You want to affect lives. But there are people who are involved who might want to sabotage you, like want to keep you quiet and all that. How would you be able to stun all the threats? Because even before now, we know you're receiving threats from some of these guys. Be able to withstand the threats to sustain this campaign. We are working with um, um, DOSU and uh, CID headquarters. So for physical um, security, I'm guaranteed. And uh, spiritual security comes from above. If God says yes, nobody can say no. Yes. So, yes. And uh, as much as Paul, even this afternoon, I met one of them. I met one of them. I, I ignored him and he came, he came and shook me. I said, I said to myself, this guy is shameless. <laughs> So, yes, as much as possible, I try to... You won't talk about him. You won't mention his name. No, I wouldn't mention his name. Uh, but if he sees the interview, he'll know, because he saw me like this today, and he knows, he knows himself. He so, saw the shirt. He shook my hand, and he looked at the shirt. I know he felt guilty. It looked, it, it was written all over him. And that's exactly what I want to achieve. For him to go sit on radio and TV and deny the fact that he ever raised his hands on me, I want him to feel guilty about it for the rest of his life and one day come out openly and apologize to Ghanaians for lying to them and tell them I am not the liar, that he is the liar. Now, because you mentioned Ghanaians, you think that Ghanaians were fair to you in the heat of the moment. Everybody was pulling out interviews they've had with you in the past. People were talking about experiences they've had with you in the past. And at that time, you were the topic for every discussion. Do you think that Ghanaians were fair to you, that they judged you, you know, too early? Well, uh, as to whether they were fair or not, I can't really tell. I think they, they were just being Ghanaians. They were just being blacks. You know, people want to see you down there and then push you even further. That's just blacks for you. They don't, they don't, they don't want anybody doing good for themselves, you know. They don't want anybody doing better than them so um if you're in the public eye for instance and there's a negativity of a sort about you everybody wants that everybody wants that to spread everybody wants everybody to hear about that but if there's something good about you they will kill it nobody will share nobody will gossip about it nobody will tell anybody about it so they they were just being Ghanaians I'm not the only one they've done it to they've done it to so many of us <laughs> so many people so I wasn't really surprised did he have an effect on your family? It did to an extent. You know, my brother actually called me one day and he said, Charlie, if you need prayers, tell me oh. what is all this? Oh. <laughs> so yes, I, to an extent, it had an effect on the family. But thank God, everything is under control now. Mm -hmm. Have you healed personally? Have you healed from all the things that you had to experience? Uh, I'm still in the healing process. I'm still in there and 
a campaign is part of the healing process. Once I'm able to achieve what I want out of it, I'll be completely healed. Mm. Tell us more about this campaign. So there's a launch coming up on Saturday. Yeah, tell us more. There's a launch on Saturday at um, La Palm Royal Beach 26th from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. And just after the launch, uh, about a month, between one and three months, we'll be having a tour. We'll be going to the Volta and the Northern region because um, the uh, abuse is on the rise more in those uh, regions. So uh, Northern region, for instance, the child marriage and everything has to be looked at and everything. So we're going to go to communities and talk to them, find out what exactly their problems are. You know, the rate of abuse in the community, the, uh, if they need any help from us, if we can afford to help them, we'll let them know. Some, some are very, very, um, you'll be surprised, some are very wealthy people, yet they face abuse. Abuse is not, abuse is not just happening in broken, uh, uh, poor homes. You'll be surprised. Even some lawyers are being abused. Some professors are being abused verbally. Some doctors are being abused in their homes. So we'll look at all that. It's not everybody that needs money or food. Mm -hmm. But with those that need ba basic um, facilities, we'll try as much as possible to provide that. Mm -hmm. But we'll have counselors and um, lawyers and um, doctors to go on the tour with us so that if people need like psychological help or help, um, physical help or any of the uh, help. legal help, we can offer them. Mm -hmm. And we'll also have food stuff and some cash on us for those that need um, maybe food or some money to start maybe some petty trades because in most of the homes because there's no money the least thing the man is provoked and he starts hitting the woman or the woman gets provoked and starts abusing the man verbally so we we will look at the problem from the grassroots what causes why they abuse the people they abuse and then see how we can help can them help. i see you have some envelopes with you are you raising funds for this project or what's the envelope for yes we will raise funds we're raising funds actually mm. for the campaign because there, definitely we can't target to receive or to get at the end of the day well, it's charity, so I don't want to quote anything. It's what I have that I can give. So if, if you have, let's say, for instance, one CD for me, and I say I'm looking for 1,000, it will put you off. So anything that anyone has and is, is, is touched to support with, we are, we are, we are always a... Mm -hmm. Ready to ready to so on the on the day you'll be raising funds at the um, definitely at yes. the launch of yes. uh, the and then why is it it's f six to eleven? Why, why is it taking that uh, while? What are the activities that are going to be happening? Okay, we're gonna have uh, we did a short film okay. based on my true life story. So we're gonna premiere that. We're gonna have my speech coming in. We have special guest who is gonna gonna give us a speech. Our chairperson Obobia. She's yeah. she's gone through a bit of challenges in her marriage as well. She's going to share her story with us, and we have um, some uh, be beauty. A uh, um, Miss Miss is it Miss Ghana 2015, the runner up, uh, Rebecca. Okay, she's going to come and share the story with us. So with all these people. And then the, um, there's going to be live band. Uh, Chenfei is going to perform his Why the Bitam track. Mm. And we're going to have other artists performing. So definitely it's going to drag mm. a bit. That's how come it it's, it's going to happen from 6 to 11. So who's, who's eligible to be there? Who can come there? How do they get to be there? Um, honestly, it's strictly by invitation. But if you are interested and you, you are for the course, and you have something to support us, just let me know. Just call 027-4444-666. And then let me add your name to the guest list. Then, Who knows? All right, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to address before we go? Um, I want to um, let people understand that it's not okay to abuse people. Lots of people are roaming the street free because they don't even know the effect of what they're doing to the people they are abusing. So they walk freely, they do everything as if nothing, everything is okay. You know, it's not okay to abuse your fellow human being. Imagine yourself in the person's shoes and, and then ask yourself how you're going to feel about it. So please stop abusing people verbally, emotionally, sexually, financially. 
any form of abuse is wrong and it kills. If you're being abused and you're watching me now, walk out, make sure you're safe, report the abuser, talk to somebody about it. Abuse kills. Let, let's, let's help reduce the uh, rate.